Hello and welcome to another edition of The Daily Shave. My name is John and today I'll be bringing you a shave featuring Holy Cow Rebel. And Holy Cow Rebel is a recent release. Uh, it's in Holy Cow's new Sierra base. And this, uh, in fact, is actually a limited edition. Um, it's got some great artwork on this label and it's part of their commemoration series. So let's get to the other parts of the shave. For my brush, I'll be using from Wild West Brushworks. This one was called Belfour. Got some really nice red, white, black swirls. Coin underneath. I went for about just under a 30 second load here of my razor. Almost forgot. This one is the Live head from West Coast Shavings, designed by Charcoal Goods. I have it on a uh, matte black Yaki handle. Really nice weight. Uh, I've been using this for my last few shaves. And this is of the three heads designed by Charcoal Goods for West Coast Shaving. This is the mildest. And um, I've actually found, as far as aggression goes, it's about medium light to medium aggression. So um, even though it's the, you know, the, the lightest of the three different heads, it's still no slouch as far as efficiency goes. So I do not have the matching splash for Rebel, but um, given it's uh, February 2020 and uh, during the season cooler weather, I like sandalwood and sandalwood is one of the notes in Rebel. So we'll go with trusty Parasso Red here. Also, I'll get to my impressions of the scent and the scent note breakdown. <clears throat> So I'm going to wet the face and we'll start building the lather. All right, here we go. So this is going on pretty pasty for a 30 second load. I debated whether uh, if this one merited a, a lighter load time, which is something I did um, to kind of help my lather with uh, Zingari Man's new Seago base as well. These um, new soap bases from the artisans that you might be hearing about are on the thirstier side. And I think it really warrants some patience to develop that lather. So if you just see on here, this can, del this can definitely take a lot more water. So let me get to that. All right, so off the tub and in this initial lathering process, I would say that the scent strength on Rebel is about medium light to medium, so maybe like a 4.5 or a 5 out of 10. It's not so strong to knock you back, but it's definitely there. And I definitely, man, this seems, Definitely is a thirsty soap. Now the scent note breakdown is the following. Uh, this includes oud, leather, tobacco, sandalwood, and vetiver. And those are all kind of notes that I do associate with cooler weather for the fall or the winter. Again, I'm not saying that you can't use those scents in other seasons, but um, they tend to be stronger and they can really project. So they stand out well in, in cooler weather, which tends to mask, uh, mask a lot of scent notes. I forgot to mention that the knot on this Wild West brush works is a game changer knot. One of my favorite synthetics. You can tell them by 
their uh, kind of black and brown uh, appearance. Really nice balance of, of um, backbone and splay. So it's not, basically it's not too floppy. It has enough backbone for, for face lathering. I'm gonna give one more, more rinse for my brush here. One other addition thing, additional thing to note, and I wasn't entirely sure if it was um, isolated to Fujiermania, the other available Sierra uh, Sierra's other scent in the Sierra base. But I I, I want to say that this base has a slight out. Animalic scent, very very light. Some soap bases I've tried um, are very neutral. Sometimes it has a scent of its own. And what I detected, as far as that an animalic note, what I detected in Fujiyama is also here as well. The funny thing is, I think it actually works along with this scent, but I do wonder if a, a lighter summery scent were to be put in this base, what exactly would happen with that? So this is something I do want to note. Yeah, you can see this is, has developed a really nice gloss glossy uh, sheen to it. It's not a super fluffy lather, voluminous or anything. It's pretty dense. All right, I think we'll go with that. Also got some of my glasses, so let me wipe that off, but we'll go to the first pass. All right, so let's go going with the lithe head. That's that's a solid soap right there. The slickness is just outstanding. I'm wondering if I could even go with more water. But even if it's slightly underhydrated, this is still shaving well. So let me get back to uh, talk about the scent. So uh, of the notes I listed, the way the scent is blended is very smooth. I'm not exactly picking out any particular note. I mean, you know, something like tobacco often presents itself, uh, makes itself known, but it's, it's in really, you know, it's in harmony with the other scents. So it's acting together as one accord And as far as who I recommend it to, I would say if you enjoy a good tobacco scent, uh, and, and this one's kind of unique as far as tobacco scents I've tried. I, um, so it, it's a unique tobacco scent. I think that it's not a um, exact, you know, like a pipe tobacco, that cherry kind of note, but it's a tobacco that has some sweetness to it, 
some warmth, some spice even. Looks like I did make myself over here a bit of a Should have been more careful there, probably. As this is like a small pimple there. But yeah, this is a, a, a unique tobacco scent that I think, um, if that's, you know, if that's your jam, if that's in your wheelhouse, I think this scent might be for you. I will say after shaving with this uh, a few times, I'm curious, um, having not gotten the, the aftershave splash, um, how, how the scent presents itself there when it's kind of uncumbered, sorry, unencumbered by the soap base itself. As I mentioned before, no, you know, no matter who the soap maker is, um, the soap will alter, um, at least in some part, um, the, the original scent. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna rinse off here and then go for the against the grain pass. Another thing to note that kind of occurred to me as I was rinsing off is the residual slickness of the soap is really good. And from my previous shaves, the post shave is outstanding. So it kind of just feels buttery. Not greasy, not oily, but you know, in trying to rinse, um, I kind of kept, you know, kept trying to rinse it off. And in fact, it had already been all clean and it's just, um, and a testament to the soap, you know, the, the, the qualities it has. All right. So we go for the against the grain pass now. In case I didn't mention it, this is uh, two days of beard growth. And that lithe head I've really been enjoying my shaves with that as well. That was a uh, recent addition recent addition to the den. The top cap got a little, uh, took a little bit of getting used to, as it's a bit of a steep, you know, more prominent uh, angle there. But it's just a difference. It's neither bad nor good. In fact, I, I'm I'm really enjoying how that razor head ra razor head has has been performing. I do think it's it's a steal at ten dollars or less if it's on sale. So the scent is very nice on Rebel. It's not an overly dark scent because I know with uh, oud, leather, and vetiver, that kind of, uh, those three in particular can really darken a scent, but I would say that this stays on the, on kind of the warmer side of things. 
It's not overly dank, which I don't really prefer those types of scents anyway. Kind of vetiver heavy, um, extremely grassy, rooty kind of, kind of vetiver. Forgive my silence, just trying to pay attention and not slash myself here. <laughs> yeah, this scent has, does have uh, a masculine cologne vibe for sure. But I, I will say the scent, um, it didn't blow me away at first. It was a little familiar, but... Um, Familiar, but it was doing its own thing. And the more I've used it, the more I, I've come to like it. I think this is one where if uh, it off was offered in the Eau de Toilette or Eau de, Eau de Parfum, that a lot of people would really enjoy that as well. I was a little more quieter in that um, against the green pass. Uh, I think this, the live head, one thing just um, in my experience is that if I don't pay attention enough, it can kind of bite me, especially in that second pass, in this sick of the area um, by chin, under my chin, my neck here, uh, which is more sensitive anyway. So I was trying to be careful not to nick myself by accident. It does a really good job of, you know, I've tested it um, in mowing down like th three or four days before and it had no problem. So I've, I've just been really impressed with, with, with this guy. Yes, oh, and so with the aftershave, We'll do the Parasso Red. I feel like this just goes with a lot of different scents I like. Very complimentary. All right, so, you know, I know I did just put a post product on, but you know, in my earlier tests with, you know, with the soap base, um, and just kind of leaving, uh, or not going with a post shave product, just do you know, at least for like half hour or so. Uh, this soap does the post shave really well. The slickness also, I, I think, yeah, post shave the slickness, it's, it's really money. And I think if Fougere Mania, because not everyone likes, you know, green floral scents, uh, if you're waiting for a different kind of scent to come out in this base to give it a try, again, uh, hopefully my description helped. It is very tobacco forward, um, very well blended. 
it's you know like a masculine like a, a fine masculine clone so you know if that sounds up your alley uh then you know holy cat Revel might be for you and yeah so if you have any questions uh you know uh curious if you like tobacco scents what are some of the tobacco scents that you go for in your den uh, let me know in the comments below I want to thank you guys so much for just watching and uh, being with me for the shave. Uh, if you want to see more content from me, you can check out my YouTube channel under uh, youtube.com slash latherhog. And yeah, I'll catch you next time. Uh, thank you everyone and take care.